Hi, I'm David Ruby, and we're sitting down today with Mr. Marvin Hamlish. Thank you for being with us. Pleasure. Um, so your music career stretched across f stage, film, uh, television. What, um, what do you are the biggest differences between the different um, mediums of entertainment? Well, when you're writing a Broadway show, the songs are really part of being able to tell a story, right? And over the many, many years, people know about a Richard Rogers show, a Stephen Sondheim show, we, an Andrew Lloyd Webber show. The, the music and lyrics are a major part of a musical. So therefore, that is a totally different way of writing as opposed to a background score. You know, music for films is background. And what you're trying to do in a film is just support the action, make something that's funny funnier, make the love scene more hot and wonderful, whatever. But it's a different way of supporting something as opposed to writing songs which have lyrics and tell a story. So those are the main differences when you're writing. One way when you're writing, you're part of, in, in the Broadway show, you're part of the team that actually comes up with this thing. With a movie, you're one of the last elements. The movie's already been made. The movie's already been done. Everything's been done, and now we're going to put the music onto it. So that's a big difference. Another huge difference is, has to do with financial. Uh, with, uh, with the Broadway show, you're, you're working on it forever. You're not making a dime, and finally it opens. And if it does well, you start to do, get money. But if it, if it dies, which many of them do, that was it. You gave two years of your life, and that was it. A movie... It, it opens, it, whatever it does, you've been paid. You've been, you have your, your, your money. So that's a big difference. And then it's your ego is a big difference because no one runs to a movie to hear a certain score. You don't go, I've got to see this movie because so-and-so scored it. Uh, but a lot of people go to a, 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 a show because they want to hear the latest uh, uh, Sondheim. You know? So that's, that's important. So it's very, very different. So when you were younger, um, there, did the influences of music and stories over the radio influence how you score or think of music um, to films today? I think, I think when it came to shows, to Broadway shows, I was influenced not so much by what was on the radio, because what was on the radio for me was mostly rock and roll and stuff like that. But I was influenced by other show music you know, that I loved. Mm -hmm. um, when I was writing music for a film, I was influenced to a degree by not so much what you heard on radio, but what you, what other composers had done in film. Some of it had always touched me very much. Like I was always taken by Henry Mancini and those beautiful melodies that he could do, or when he was funny and he could do Pink Panther and stuff like that. So uh, you you tend to be a person that comes out of a certain climate of music, and then you try to find something that it has your own voice, that's your own way of doing it. Because uh, someone used to call it like music. You know, you write like so and so as opposed to you write the way you write. Uh, and that takes time to develop your own personality in writing, you know? Uh, but when I was listening to the radio at that time in my life, it was all about rock and roll. Talk about working in different orchestras. What um, does that, so that's more of the classical music then? No, it's the, more the, no, it's the pops. It's the pops. Okay. But, you know, let me tell you why I enjoy it. I get to play and conduct other people's music. And you do an evening of Cole Porter, you do an evening of Stephen Sondheim, you do an evening of uh, Richard Rogers. You learn a lot by doing those evenings. You know, you really re realize what these people have done. And uh, it's very helpful. Plus, it really helps you as a person who, when they're working on their own scores, can remember certain orchestrations that you loved and why you loved them. And you start to think, OK, maybe this could work here, maybe this could work there. So anytime you're listening to music like that, I think it's very good. Um, how, you know, your, your arts education when you were younger. Right, yes. Um, what were the, the main things you took away from that that influenced your... I, think, I have to say something. I think arts education is so important. I think it's part of being a human being. I don't think the American government gets it. I don't think they understand that it's as important as, as uh, you know, math and English. Because I think it, it rounds you out as a person, you know? And I think it gives you a certain love 
uh, of, of just artistic things. Whether or not, you don't have to become a, the great next composer, but it's nice to have heard certain pieces in your life and, and get a feeling for that. Or to see certain things that are artistic and just go, wow, that's a beautiful sculpture. Uh, that's, that's part of being a human being. And I think that we sometimes just stress so much on, on, on math and then on the English, and particularly on phys ed, that uh, we sometimes give short shrift to something that I think is very important. Right. So send your dollars to school. <laughs> okay.